Quick Tech Quick Tech coming to you from Saskatchewan here today with an episode called Hey, Let's Hey. This time on Quick Tech, we're gonna take a tour around Saskatchewan here and show you how we make hay. Now we make hay because cows obviously need something to eat in the winter time when there's nothing around but snow. But in order for that to happen, we're gonna have to make hay in the summer so we've got hay in the winter time so the cows can eat. You wanna see how we do it? Sure you do. First step is cutting hay. Now there's a whole bunch of different types of plants that you can find in hay. There's different grasses, different legumes, just a wide variety of different things that people use and call hay. This is gonna be super easy. We're gonna be using a plant called alfalfa. When you think of alfalfa, this is probably what you think of. But that's a different alfalfa. The alfalfa we're gonna be cutting today is a perennial plant, which means it comes back every year without us having to seed it. And it's great in crop rotations because it helps mitigate weed problems and it helps regenerate your soil. Now we start cutting this stuff right when it kind of starts to flower, sometimes between starting stage and 50% of flower. So you can see here, we've got two plants that are at different stages. This one is flowering, because you can see that it's got all the little purple flowers on it, okay? And this one hasn't started flowering yet. And we're gonna cut the hay today with a rotary disc. Now how this works is it's a really cool unit. See, we use this swather for swathing and for cutting, but with two different headers. So how it works is there's a big engine up underneath here. This big engine drives this thing right here. It's a hydraulic pump. And what happens with that hydraulic pump is it sends hydraulic oil down these lines right here and they come out to the front of the header and they drive this thing right here. It's a big hydraulic motor and it spins like this. And then through a bunch of gear boxes that comes down here to this drive line. And when this spins, everything spins, okay? Then what happens down here is all these knives come right down low to the ground and they act like a big lawnmower and they spin really fast. And these accelerators flip it up once it's cut and then it goes back through that thing which is called our conditioner. Now what a conditioner does is it takes a plant like this that's strong and sturdy and it makes it look like this. So you see both plants like this when we hold them from the top, when we come down to the bottom, this one folds over. Well it folds over because what the conditioner does is it puts tiny little breaks in this plant and what that allows to do is it allows the plant to dry faster because there's little places where moisture can get out of it. Okay, this is what it looks like right here when everything's spinning. Now, I took this shot with a drone, so there's not actually a person standing in front of this. This is a very dangerous area to ever be around any piece of equipment. When you see places that have rotating equipment in operation, do not be anywhere near them. Only have your butt parked in the driver's seat. So then from our crimper, the alfalfa gets spit out backwards and it comes through these things right here called forming shields. And what the forming shields do is they form the alfalfa into a nice little row of hay, which looks like this. You wanna see it in action? Sure you do. Look at this, you guys, we did it. We got it all cut. Now the only thing left to do is to leave it lay here for a couple of days and let the sun do its job to dry it all out. Woo! Now we're gonna let the sun dry it all out because just like, well, let's use socks for an example. If you were to put wet socks, well, these are actually dirty socks. 
But if they were wet coming out of the washing machine, you wouldn't put them into your drawer because they're going to be gross and smelly and moldy when you go to take them out. Well, it's the same with hay. It's got to dry before you can roll it all up. So we let the sun and the wind dry it out. But sometimes your swath is a little bit thick and on the underside of your swath, the hay's not dry, but it's dry on top. So we use a very cool tool to help with that problem. We're gonna use one of these bad boys. Now this is called a wheel rake. Now this thing folds out into a V and you take one swath on this side and one swath on that side and you pull them both together into one big swath. So now when you come with the baler, you're gonna be baling 32 feet instead of 16. And it gives that hay that's underneath that's still a little bit wet a chance to get up top and to get some air and let the sun help dry it out. Do you wanna see how we do it? Sure you do. But before we go and see how we rake, it's important that everybody knows that I didn't really do any raking this year. There was two very special agricultural technicians that basically looked after this hay field on their own, and that's these two right here. You might remember from the silage video that I did, uh, I had to go down to Maple Creek and do some stuff uh, during hay season. So these two and Oofta looked after most of it, and a uh, big shout out to them. So we're gonna see some drone footage from last year that I took kind of put it all together and uh, yeah, we'll just go with it. Anyways, wanna see how we rake? Let's rake. So once our hay has been raked and it's dry on both sides, it is time to bale it. Well, baling is when we use this special machine right behind me that you see called a baler. And what a baler does is it takes the swath that we have cut and raked and it rolls it up into a great big round bale. And it's super cool how it works. So the first thing that happens is the power comes from the engine of the tractor out the back through this PTO shaft and then it goes into this gearbox and out the side to a drive chain. Now the drive chain drives basically everything on the baler through a whole bunch of other chains and sprockets which makes it a very dangerous place to be. Now I know how the equipment works, I'm working with somebody else and we're in a controlled environment in a lot of places I'm just propping my camera on a mag mount and walking away from it. Don't go near these implements when they're running. They're very dangerous places. That's why I'm making this video so I can show you how they work without you having to be anywhere near them, okay? So here's a look at all the sprockets and chains spinning. It drives the pickup, which is the part that picks the hay out of the swath and puts it into the baler. This is a very dangerous area. So then the pickup feeds the hay up towards the starter and drum roller. And the hay starts coming in and it starts turning like this in the baler in the direction that the belts are going. And that's what all these guys are here, they're belts. So while that bale is turning on the main drive drum, the belts help compress the hay down onto the bale and they keep helping it roll in the same direction and keep packing the hay on and packing the hay on. And the bale just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger inside of the baler. And then eventually, once the baler detects with this device right here that it's full enough to the size that we preset it to, we get an indication in the cab that it's time to start wrapping our bale. And that's where this stuff comes in. Now the net wrap is on a big roll and the baler automatically starts it where it just makes a few different changes on a lever system down here and the net wrap gets fed down along the belts and it rolls its way onto the bale. And we usually put about two full wraps on the bale. And then it cuts the net wrap. Then our monitor lets us know that the bale's done wrapping and we pull the hydraulic lever to open up the end gate to kick the bale out. And then we close the end gate. And we start all over again and we just keep going back and forth until we bale the whole field. You wanna see how it looks? Sure you do.
then once we get it all done and bailed up, we haul it back to the stackyard here so it's close to where we need to feed it this winter. Now, now, well, now you're gonna have to wait for part two because it's a uh, quarter to one and I gotta have this uploaded for 6 a.m. so you guys can watch it in the morning. So we're gonna push this into a part two because I haven't shown you a whole bunch of stuff yet. We still gotta make square hay bales. We're gonna make square straw bales, round straw bales, and then we're gonna haul them all back to the same area so that we've got all this feed and bedding and stuff kicking around so we can look after the cows this winter. So, catch this in part two. I'm gonna edit this and upload it so we can all get to bed here. But to M, to Double R, to Oofta, to the Big Kahuna, thanks for being such an awesome team. And for the rest of you folks that tune in every week, thank you so much. If you want some sweet Quick Dick merch, you can go to quickdickmcdick.ca. And this is Quick Dick McDick signing off, reminding you if it's the middle of the winter and you want to make a cow's day, just go get the tractor and feed her some hay. Catch you next time. QuickTakeMcDick.ca, shipping directly to you from Tufnell, Saskatchewan, made in Canada.